Hello YouTubers, welcome back to the channel. First of all, I'm very sorry for the long delay. I had COVID and that wasn't very kind to me. And after that, work really kicked off. So, well, it's been a while since the last time I did a video. I hope you forgive me. But this time we have a kit review. And the kit I am going to be reviewing today, as you can see, is the German Neubaufachzeug. Something like that which um, I will be going through the spruce in front of you as you can see so you can pay attention to that if you like and then I'll quickly summarize the history of this tank because it is quite interesting actually. So the Neubaufahrzeug was the first tank developed after Adolf Hitler came to power in Germany in 1933. It was supposed to be a medium tank with multiple turrets so it had guns that can fire in all directions. At least that was the idea. The tank was uh, weighing in at about 22-23 tons and it was called a tractor to begin with so that the allies or what became the allies wouldn't be suspicious of what was actually going on. It had a crew of six men, a primary armament of a 75mm cannon, its secondary armament of a 37mm cannon and three 7.92mm gun, machine guns MG34 to be precise. The tank wasn't really a success and only five numbers were built though they were a sort of a success for Nazi Germany as a propaganda tool and they were shown at the automobile exhibition in Berlin in 1939 however the only action these tanks saw was in Norway Woo! shout out the tanks only saw action against British and Norwegian forces uh, when the Germans entered the Gudbrandsdal Valley and the British forces there were equipped with Boys anti-tank rifles which could quite easily penetrate the armour of the Neubaufahrzeug even from the front. So after taking several hits one of them killed the driver and the tank was abandoned. After a while it became clear that the tank was a massive obstacle that was blocking the way which the Germans were trying to advance. So eventually the tank was filled with explosives and was blown up. It's not very clear what happened to the rest of them after the war, but presumably they were all scrapped in Norway at some point. And the only surviving part of the Neubaufahrzeug today is part of the suspension and the running gear kept it in a museum in Kvam. But that's enough of the history of the tank and time to get on with how is this model kit and how does it go together? Well, if you've been paying attention in the background while I was talking, you will have seen all the spruce and all the instruction of this thing. And I have to say, it is a very nice little kit. With It has a lot of parts, a lot of different parts, so you don't really get tired of assembling loads and loads and loads of wheels. Yes, I'm looking at you, Churchill from Tamaya. But the amount of detail they managed to get on this kit is really quite astonishing really and whilst it was very very nice compared to other kits and what I expected from this from what I per paid for it I was really surprised and the details are very nice and the parts are very clean the amount of flash on this thing was next to nothing there was almost nothing that had to be trimmed away and the molding seams as well are very very subtle and someplace I couldn't really see how it was molded because it was so nicely and well executed I mean, of course, I'll go into some parts that have some flash on it, like these where mountings for the guns and everything, but on these small vision slits, it was next to nothing. Nothing had to be trimmed away, and that was rather nice, actually, because these are quite small parts to begin with. So, yeah, very happy about that. And also, I do like tanks that have this bathtub hole. Is that what you call it? Tub hole? Uh, because I sometimes I struggle to get the plates and things together so it goes so it's straight you know it, you'll know what I mean but this kit went together very nicely and everything fits like I had huge trouble with the Jagd Panther that I made in my one of my previous videos where there was an enormous gap in the front but this thing there was no need for putty or anything like that because all the details are very nice and goes together very nicely all in all, I think this is a pretty good kit, and I would recommend it, well, maybe not for a beginner's kit, but certainly for an advanced model, this wouldn't be a problem at all.
So, one of the only parts that really did annoy me on this kit, which annoyed me quite a bit, actually, uh, were the PE parts on the suspension. As you can see here, I laid out all the parts that goes into the suspension. I like to do this sort of factory lineup where I just assemble them all at once. And as you can see, there are a tiny piece of PE parts, which you cannot see here because I didn't include them. Because I kept putting them upside down, and they wouldn't fit properly, and the glue didn't hold them together, so it just fell off. So I just I just removed them and took them off. And uh, this layout I quite like, the whole suspension, you put that on as one big piece. I thought that was quite neat. And as you can see, everything just snaps into place very, very nicely, and... Yeah, very pleased about that. Also, I used a lot of glue on this. I know you're not; it's not necessary. And I should have used maybe the uh, Tamiya panel liner, but I have this thing, Revels, laying around, and it does the job, and it's adequate, I think. Also, I'm going to heavily put some mud on this thing, so you won't see the glue all that well anyway. And now we come to my second criticism of this kit. Do you see what this thing is? These are bolts. They're bolts on the end here that's supposed to go into the track. And you get this fancy jig we're supposed to use, and you're supposed to put a bolt in every track link, one on each side, to keep this thing together. And I just found that putting bolts into this, I could only do it once, because it was frustratingly time-consuming and I kept snipping them off and the carpet monster ate half of them so I just decided screw this I'm not going to use these bolts you don't actually need them unless you want all the track individual track links to be movable so I just used a couple of them and decided to just glue the entire thing together because you can see how tiny these things are supposed to go in these holes here and I just couldn't be asked doing it so I just glued the uh, track links together without the bolt and it worked fine. And there we have it, the German Neubau Fachzeug U135 scale by Trumpeter. As you might have already guessed, this is a kit I would recommend to almost everybody. It's a very nice little kit uh, and it goes together very nicely. The amount of flash is negligible and the kit looks very good, it feels very good and working on it was yeah an absolute joy very f no i think no parts broke when i was just cutting them off and that's some of you may already know how frustrating that can be and the kits yeah generally i don't have any huge criticisms apart from the tracks and the pe parts that i couldn't get to fit properly that i'll put that on me other than that it's a very nice kit and I hope that this video might have convinced you to give it a go. I can only recommend it. So that will be it for this video. Uh, sorry for the long delay since my last one. Hopefully I'll uh, fix my schedule so that I'll produce more videos more regularly. We'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And please leave a like and consider subscribing.